This is part three in a three-part tutorial where we'll explore the action of muscles on the abdominals, gluteals, legs, and feet. We'll begin our exploration of the abdominal muscles. The abdominal muscles are a series of four muscles that are layered one on top of another. And so in order to explore them, we'll have to begin layer by layer, slowly dissecting them away. We'll begin with the external most, which is known as the external oblique, external because it is well on the outside and oblique because it is at that diagonal angle. Its origin is on these eight lower ribs here and its insertion is along the aponeurosis, that flat tendon, as well as the linea alba. It's also attached to the pubic crest down here. As you can see, it's involved in a vertebral flexion as well as a vertebral twist. So it has a twisting action. So the left hand external oblique will cause a right rotation. So front to back rotation. Its last action is a lateral flexion, lateral flexion of the vertebrae. Now we'll remove the external oblique and expose this next layer. This is our internal oblique. The origin of the internal oblique is along the iliac crest here, and its insertion is on the linea alba, as well as the pubic crest, very similar to the external oblique. Its action, similar to the external oblique, is involved in flexion of our vertebrae. Very similar to the external oblique, it also is involved in a rotation of the vertebrae. However, um, in a um, slightly different manner. So in the external oblique, if we're, if we're rotating to the right, our left muscle is engaged. However, for the internal oblique, when we're rotating to the right, it's because our right internal oblique muscle is engaged. Its action will also involve a lateral flexion of the vertebrae. The next abdominal muscle is the rectus abdominis. This is the one that we think of when we think of a six pack. Its origin is the pubic crest and pubic symphysis, and insertion is the xiphoid process. Its action is in flexion of the lumbar region as well as stabilizing our pelvis while we walk. The last abdominal muscle is the transversus abdominis. It's the deepest of the four. Its origin is the iliac crest, last six ribs, and lumbar and its insertion is along the linea alba as well as the pubic crest. It acts to compress the contents within the abdominal cavity. Next, we'll be looking at the gluteal muscles, which activate the posterior thigh. Just like the abdominal muscles, they are in layers, so we'll begin with the external layer most first. The first of the muscles is the gluteus maximus. Its origin is on the dorsal ilium, sacrum as well as coccyx, and its insertion is on the gluteal tuberosity of the femur. Its action is in the abduction of the leg, the lateral rotation when the knee is bent, and the extension of the leg or the hip in a posterior direction. When you put these three actions together, your gluteus maximus makes a great powerful muscle to help you when climbing or jumping. The gluteus medius is just underneath our gluteus maximus. Its origin is along the iliac crest and insertion is on the greater trochanter of the femur. Its action is in medial rotation of the knee but only in the flexed rotation. It also acts in abduction of the leg. The last gluteal muscle is the gluteus minimus. It will work alongside the gluteus medius. The next set of muscles we'll be looking at are those acting on the anterior thigh. We'll begin with the psoas major muscle. It is a fairly deep muscle within the pelvic region. Its origin is on the transverse process of the lumbar and insertion on the lesser trochanter of the femur. Contraction causes flexion of the leg at the pelvis, allowing the knee to be brought up to the chest. So S major also maintains posture while bowing. The adductor longus muscle is another fairly deep muscle. Its 
origin is on the pubis near the pubic symphysis, and insertion is on the linea aspera of the femur. It causes flexion of the leg at the pelvis and adduction of the leg. The gracilis is another adductor muscle running the entire length of the medial thigh from its origin at the pubic bone to the medial condyle of the tibia. Tensor fasci lati is a lateral hip muscle that originates at the iliac crest and inserts into the proximal end of the iliotibial tract, which is a tendon that runs the entire length of the thigh, inserting into the lateral condyle of the tibia. It is an abductor muscle and hip flexor. It also allows for medial rotation when the knee is flexed or bent. The sartorius is the last of the major muscles acting on the anterior thigh. It is a superficial muscle that runs diagonally across the thigh, originating at the anterior iliac spine and inserting into the medial and proximal end of the tibia around the knee. The sartorius flexes and abducts the legs. The sartorius also causes lateral rotation when the knee is bent. This allows one to cross their legs when in a seated position. We'll now explore the muscles on the upper leg that act on the lower leg. We'll begin by looking at a group of muscles known as the quadriceps. Beginning with the most superficial is the rectus femoris, and then medially to laterally is the vastus medialis, vastus intermedius, and vastus lateralis. All four quadriceps will work together to extend the knee and will therefore have a similar insertion site at the patella and tibial tuberosity. We will explore the origins of each of these muscles. The rectus femoris originates at the anterior iliac spine as well as the margin of the acetabulum. It will be involved in extension of the knee as well as hip flexion. The vastus medialis originates on the intertrochanteric line, which is the ridge in between the greater and lesser trochanter of the femur. The vastus medialis uh, are involved in stabilization of the knee during extension. The vastus intermedius originates along the surface of the lateral and anterior side of the femur. The vastus lateralis originates on the greater trochanter of the femur. There are three muscles on the posterior side of the leg that activate the lower leg. From medial to lateral, they include the semimembranosus, semitendinosus, and the biceps femoris, collectively known as the hamstrings. All three hamstrings will have their origin at the ischial tuberosity, and they will be involved in extension of the leg at the pelvis and knee flexion. Therefore, we will consider only differences in insertion and specific actions. We'll begin with the semimembranosus, but just be careful not to confuse it with the gracilis, which is also a medial muscle that can be seen both anterior and posteriorly. The semimembranosus inserts at the medial condyle of the tibia, and it's involved in medial rotation when the knee is bent. The semitendinosus inserts on the medial proximal end of the tibia just below the condyle. The biceps femoris inserts into the fibula, head, and lateral condyle of the tibia. In addition to leg extension and knee flexion, the biceps femoris is also involved in lateral rotation of the leg when the knee is flexed. The last group of muscles are those acting on the ankle and foot. Their origins are on the proximal ends of the fibula and tibia, and their insertion is on the tarsal and metatarsal as well as phalanges of the foot. The tibialis anterior originates on the lateral condyle of the tibia and inserts into the medial metatarsal of the foot. The tibialis anterior is involved in dorsiflexion and inversion of the foot. The extensor digitorum longus originates on the lateral condyle of the tibia as well as the proximal end of the fibula. It inserts into the phalanges of toes number two through five. It is a synergist of the tibialis anterior in dorsiflexion. It is also involved in the extension of toes two through five, so all of them excluding the big toe. The fibularis longus 
originates on the fibular head and extends down to the lateral metatarsal or the fifth metatarsal. It causes plantar flexion and eversion of the foot. The soleus is a deeper muscle of the calf. It originates in the fibular head and the proximal end of the tibia on the posterior side. It inserts into the calcaneus via the calcaneal tendon. It is a synergist of the gastrocnemius as a plantar flexor muscle. This muscle forming our calf is called the gastrocnemius. Its origin is up on the medial and lateral condyles of the femur, and its insertion is on a very long tendon, as you can see on the bottom here. It's called the calcaneal tendon, um, which will eventually attach to our calcaneus or the back of our heel. Um, its action is to help with plantar flexion or causing your toes to point. It will also help with flexing your leg. It'll assist in the flexion of your knee. The flexor digitorum longus is a deep muscle that extends all the way down the posterior side of the tibia to the bottom of your foot. It has extensive origins on the posterior tibia and inserts on the tendon that runs behind the medial malleolus splitting onto the distal phalanges of toes two through five. It causes flexion of the toes. And that was the last tutorial of the human muscular system. I hope you found these tutorials helpful as we explored the muscle groups, their attachment sites, and actions. Thanks for watching. Bye.